Hi, and today I'm going to share with you a cross stitch project which I found at the bottom of my needlework box where it's been forgotten about for years. So I've lifted it out and had another go at finishing it off. And oh, there's another UFO, unfinished object. The peacock, I really like peacocks. It's coming along slowly. Keep building it up, layer by layer, line by line. And gradually it'll get finished. And there it is finished. I need to find a frame for it now. <laughs> little plain white frame, I think. Right, I'm taking you for a walk around my garden. I have a small urban garden. The lavender's been beautiful this year. I must say, beautiful. You can see the lily that's opened up there. And there's the bird bath. And that's a, a shrub whose name I can't remember. It has huge pink flowers on it. They don't last very long. And that's some grass. My chamomile's looking lovely as always. And the fuchsias have been gorgeous this year. As has that rose. That's at the bottom of the garden. Back to me lavender again, see? That's the view from the bottom of the garden forwards. The colours go... Oh, our cherry crop's been fantastic. We've had loads of cherries off it. Far more than we can see in that picture. And here's Rosie and Jim guarding the art room as usual. Sitting on the embroidery box so they can see out the window. There's Rosie sort of sniffing around. Don't know what they found to growl around. Every time a pigeon lands in a tree, they start growling. <laughs> Listen to that bird song. Hmm? There's my little table. There's a piece that just finishes a sketch from the park. And there's a sketch that I'm working on. Cup of tea, of course. Vital equipment. Never start on our work without a cup of tea. And here's another work in progress on the easel. That's acrylics, that one. And here we are. Rosie and Jim have taken me for a walk to the park. I've been sketching in Birkenhead Park now for about seven years. I've got an enormous pile of sketches. Don't quite know what to do with them all. Got any bright ideas? Let me know. You can see some of the sketches in earlier videos. Here we're just walking along a grassy area. And into the trees. One of our favourite spots. Beautiful old trees in the park. Look at the height of these. Absolutely gorgeous. It makes you feel dizzy looking up. Here's one of our favourite walks. Some lovely old trees there. Huge variety of different species. Oh, the light's bleached out that bit. That's a bit of a nuisance. I'm filming this part on my old Kodak camera, which I really must replace with a better model at some point. It serves a purpose and it fits in a pocket, so although it's not so bad. There's Rosie and Jim sniffing things as they walk. I wonder they haven't worn a little nose out. Beyond that tree is one of the lakes, but the sun's bleached it out on the camera this time. So you haven't got such a fantastic view, but if you were there yourself in real life, it looked gorgeous. It's a very popular park. It's so important to have these urban green spaces. And of course the dogs love, love going there, sniffing stuff, pottering around. They've got various little feel, furry friends that they meet up with and sniff noses and wag tails with. <laughs> Funny, I know the names of the dogs but not the owner's name. 
maybe that's a little belly. <laughs> What's Rosie spotted? Jim's spotted it now too, whatever it is. Oh no, they've lost interest. Probably squirrel. Lots of squirrels in the park. Oh, lovely old tree there. The size of it is incredible. Going up and up and up. Beautiful green canopy. Here we are by one of the ponds. Got a family of coots and a moorhen. And there's a mountain swimming about. Canada goose. Canada geese, even. Two coots fighting. So typical of coots to start squabbling with each other. They're such aggressive little birds. Pigeons pottering around. See a bridge in the distance there. And you can't really make it out, but there was a couple of swans there, but on my camera it just came out like a white blob. <laughs> Beautiful old willow tree in the background there. And there's a squirrel up a tree. I decided to come and see what I was doing. Who's more fascinated, me or the squirrel? We sit there watching them. Do you ever stop to think what they what do they make of us? There's the Romanesque boathouse. Some people call it a Roman boathouse, but the Romans really didn't build it, so no, it's Romanesque. It's built in Victorian times like the rest of the park. It was um, one of the the first free public park in Europe, actually. Apparently Central Park was modelled on Birkenhead Park. You can see a tree's fallen over there and landed in the water. And the birds make good use of it by standing on it. Look at this gorgeous willow tree, the way it's grown is reaching right out over the water. Probably at some point its own weight will pull it into the water. The ducks seem to like hanging around underneath it. Gives them some shade, I guess. Look at the rugged bark on that one. Beautiful tree. There are two halves of the park. This is in the lower section. And this this section has a pond with snakes round and round in different places to make it look as though it's far bigger than it actually is. Two ponds, this is the main one. And this is the Swiss Bridge. Pigeons love sitting on the roof. And on the stanchions underneath the bridge which fascinates my dogs because when we walk over the wooden part they can hear the pigeons cooing and the dogs are fascinated by why the floor is cooing at them. <laughs> Don't you wish other people's kids could come with a volume button? And there's a second pond dimension. Look at those lovely, lovely lilies. And there's me sketching in the pond, making, sketching in the park rather, sketching in the pond. What am I on about? Sketching in the park, making an impromptu easel out of my bag. <laughs> I've got the dog's leads in one hand and I'm trying to sketch and balance my pad over my back of my bag with the other hand. Not easy. Dogs do not sit still, consequently a sketch pad tends to wobble all over the place. <laughs> Thank you.
and there's a sketch and there's me in the art room what's up Jim? what's up boy? what's up Jim? what's up boy? What's up, little fella? What's up? <laughs> what are you doing? What? Well, oh, you're escaping again. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing, you strange little dog? Right, I'm just putting some first washes on this. Quick little, very quick, light, pale blue, pale bluey green wash, just to indicate some shadows. Jim doesn't approve of something, I don't quite know what. What are you supervising, little lad? <laughs> What's the matter, Jim? What's up, little dog? What's up, my gorgeous little fella? What can we do for you? Mixing some lemon yellow and Bain's grey. And I'm putting some light washes. Oh, that's a bit dark actually. Oops. No matter, it won't matter. Sometimes mistakes work out for the best. <laughs> Gotta say that now, haven't I? No, but it is true actually. You can be too careful. It's all your sketchbook. The sketch was started doing in the park yesterday. And I'm back in the studio. With a bit of help from Jim squeaking behind me, and um, we're just going to put some loose light washes of watercolour just to add a bit of interest to the painting as it comes along. Let me show you what I've done so far because this lighting I really doesn't pick it up too well. Can you see that? You can't probably see that too well. Anyway, I'll let that dry and come back to it in a minute. Of course, a pause in filming is always a handy spot to have a cup of tea. Can't go wrong with a fine old cup of tea. Now, a bit more lemon yellow. And hint of blue. Everything that you painted last time. You don't want it to be sort of a blanket wash. Give some space. The light space. Splash them off the glass. Keep it fairly loose. I'm trying to create a cohesive colour scheme. That's why I use the same colour for limited palette. I tend to do that trick quite well. Ah, there's Jimbo again, squeaking. Put that down a second. There we go. Let me show you. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that too well. Oh no, the light's bleaching it out for you. You have to bring this closer. Can I bring it closer? Will that show it you better? That's what we've got so far. That's only the beginning of a piece though. It's only the beginning. Now, in the palette now is some Naples yellow and brown, mid-brown. And this I'm going to use with a different brush, slightly smaller filbert brush, which I rather like using. And this is for the tree trunks. Now tree trunks aren't often brown, they're more sort of silvery grey colour. Which is why I don't 
use pure brown on them. I use multiple different colours because each tree, each species of tree is a different colour and the colour also varies from tree to tree you've got the same species depending on where it is how much light it gets, how moist the ground is etc. Well, everything's, you, nature's never uniform oh goodness Uh, very lightly splash it on and blend that with the ground because trees don't just stand there they blend with the join with the ground and blend in with the ground where the roots tap in and the soil on the base of the trees a few sweeps of it same colour across the ground and I'll put a bit more there as well just to depth a, a little bit of strength to put the shadows there we go that's nice that's so far I'll hold it to the screen so you can see what I've done pardon me again it's only the beginning right a little bit more of a darker shade to that just a little bit Just to give some shadow. And just dab that on in the body. Shadows are going to fall. Just lightly. And the further back trees are, the, well, it'd be a little bit paler. Everything in the distance looks paler than the stuff that's in the front of you. You paint things in the background dark, I'm going to bring them forward and ruin really sense of perspective. Uh, I'll let that dry a minute, I'll show you again what I've done. Hold it up so you can see it with my dodgy lighting system. Lift it up a bit. Right, onwards, let that dry before we do anything else. Just mix some Payne's grey with a little bit of brown and I'm going to be adding some details to the bark. Not much, just a few touches to give the characteristic rugged surface of the bark. Now the trees further away I won't touch because I don't want details on them. That's for your perspective. Less is more when it comes to details, definitely. Quietly put that on there. One the important thing to learn from watercolour is when to stop adding stuff. It's quite possible to paint things to death by going overboard with fiddly details. I think that's something we all have to learn. Recognising when to stop painting. And just leave things alone. Marks on the ground now just to give a sense of surface texture. Hold it up to show you what I've done. And I'll let that dry now.